Hello and welcome back. Today I want to start talking about filters specifically designed to attenuate common mode and differential mode noise on supply lines. Now in general all filters follow the same principles, but designing an efficient filter requires understanding both the measurement setup and component limitations. Today I want to discuss how the circuit setup has different properties based on whether we're talking about common mode or differential mode noise. So if you're curious, then keep watching. Let's start off with a few words about a generic setup involving a noise source and a measurement equipment. So what I have here is a very basic circuit involving a noise source and a measurement equipment. So this will be the fundamental circuit that we will be working with today. Now the noise source other than a voltage source also contains some internal series impedance and the measurement equipment again has some internal impedance but this is in parallel with the measurement circuit. So the measurement is performed in parallel with this resistance. So in real life this will be your LISN or something. Now regardless of whether we're talking about common mode noise or differential mode noise, the point of the filter will be to be put in between these two elements and attenuate the signal that gets to the measurement equipment. So how hard can it be? Well there are two fundamental ways to create a filter. You can either add some series impedance or you can add some parallel impedance. And in practice you will most likely find a combination of these. Now with the filter I'm talking about impedance rather than resistance because if your lines are power supply lines you want to be able to deliver energy as efficiently as possible in DC and have the filter only act when you're talking about AC noise. So you don't want your filter to cause too many losses. If we would be adding resistors, then those would cause huge losses, both if they were series or if they were in parallel and short circuiting your supply. So the series element needs to have close to zero resistance in DC and only increase its impedance as frequency goes up. So this is an inductor, whereas the parallel element needs to have close to infinite resistance in DC and then this impedance goes down as frequency increases so it's most often implemented as a capacitor. So to see how these two elements will impact our circuit I prepared the simulation in which I'm stepping the value of our added impedance from 1 ohm to 10 kilo ohms in 5 steps per decade. So if we run the simulation and we look through the values a bit, we can see that we have the smallest attenuation, so close to zero decibels when we add the smallest impedance, so one ohm, and we move lower and lower, so for example we're at minus 20 decibels when we add 400 ohms. And the more impedance we're adding, the greater the attenuation. Likewise, if we look to the parallel circuit, when we add the one ohm resistor we get the largest attenuation, so minus six decibels, and as we increase the added impedance, we get lower and lower attenuations. So with series elements, you want to add as much impedance as possible. With parallel elements, you want to add as little impedance as possible. So up to this point, this should not be too much of a surprise. But another interesting element to consider here is how the value of your added impedance needs to compare to the two resistors already present in the system. So the internal impedance of the noise source and the parallel impedance of the measurement equipment. When we talk about our series impedance, we were able to get close to the minus 6 decibel point at around 40 ohms. So when our added resistance is getting closer and beyond our largest resistor, we're starting to get more and more attenuation. So to half the signal, we need to be equal to the sum of the two impedances. And if the values are significantly different, so as is the case in this example, so 1 ohm and 50 ohm, we need to be equal to the value of the largest resistor. In contrast, if we look at the parallel case, we get to the minus 6 decibel point when our added resistance is 1 ohm. So this is the same value as our smallest resistor. And to get more attenuation than this, we need to go even lower than our smallest resistor. 
And regardless of which resistor is which, so right now I started off with 1 ohms in the internal impedance and 50 on the measurement equipment. If we look at the exact same circuit, but this time the two resistors have been swapped around, and we look at what sort of attenuation we get, starting off with the parallel circuit. So first of all, we're starting with minus 34 decibels. So because of the two resistors present in the circuit, we start off with quite a good level of attenuation. But we can go only 6 decibels above this by adding the 1 ohm resistor. So regardless of which resistor is which, for the parallel case, we need to be comparable or above the smallest of the resistors. And in a similar fashion, for the series case, we need to be comparable or above the largest of the two resistors. Now, this is an extremely important element to consider when looking at the real life setup. So in the case of differential mode noise, the impedance that the noise is seeing, so on the measurement side, are the two impedances of the setup in series. So if you have two 50 ohm LISNs, it's 100 ohms. And the internal impedance of the differential mode noise is quite small, so in the order of a few ohms. So in the case of differential mode noise, the small resistor is usually within the unit, and the large resistor is on the measurement equipment side. Now with common mode noise, we have a slightly different story. So first of all, on the measurement side, we have the two 50 ohm resistors in parallel, so only 25, whereas on the unit side, other than some series resistance, which is usually small, we have this capacitor, which is formed between the unit and the ground plane, which is usually very, very small. So just a few picofarads or tens of picofarads. And especially at low frequencies, the impedance of this capacitor is very, very large compared to whatever you have on the measurement equipment side. So in the case of common mode noise, the small resistor is on the measurement equipment side, the large resistor or large impedance is on the noisy unit side. And the reason why this is so important is because if we're adding some sort of filter impedance in between the two circuits, the exact same impedance will have a different effect on the two noise types because the two noise circuits contain completely different impedances. So the exact same filter might be very good for one type of noise and completely useless for the other type of noise. And to illustrate this, I prepared a setup in which I'm generating noise using my noise mixer, so this will be generating both common mode and differential mode noise, and I'm measuring it using my LISN. So both of these two circuits I've talked about in more detail in older videos, so I don't want to go into too many details on that. So if we connect the LISN to the spectrum analyzer, we can see two clear spikes appearing. So one is at 320 kilohertz, the other is at 330 kilohertz, and both of these are coming from the signal generator, but the first one is differential mode noise, the other is common mode noise. So I've chosen two very similar frequencies to be able to more easily evaluate our filters. Now at the moment, based on the amplitudes that are coming from the signal generator, both of the spikes are roughly equal. So they don't start off being equal, but the LSN is measuring them as equal values. So now, if I add this filter, so what I have here is 200 microhenry inductors placed on two supply lines, and I will be adding this into the circuit to see how it affects our performance. So now I added in the filter, I also froze the previous measurement in pink, and what we can see is that the two noise spikes were attenuated differently. Now, it is true that the two spikes are appearing at different frequencies, so the inductors in our filter have different impedance at these frequencies, but that is definitely not enough to explain the huge difference that we are getting. If anything, the larger impedance of the inductor at higher frequencies should cause it to better attenuate higher frequencies. But what we see is that our first spike is far better attenuated than our second spike. And the reason behind that is that our first spike is the differential mode noise, our second spike is the common mode noise. So with the exact same filter, we are barely attenuating a few decibels on the common mode noise, but we have almost 30 decibels of attenuation on the differential mode noise. And the reason behind this, of course, is the different impedances that the current see in the two noise types. So when trying to design a filter for a specific type of noise, it's always important to consider the impedances present. Another important aspect to consider is where the current flows 
in the two types of noise. So to get the filter to filter anything, it needs to be in the path of the noise current. So if we talk about differential mode noise, it will go out one of the lines, close through the measurement equipment, come back through the other line. So if we want to add a series filter element, it can go on any of the lines or on both of the lines, doesn't matter. And if we want to add a parallel filter element, it needs to go between the two lines. So simple enough. Now, if we talk about common mode noise, we have a slightly different story here. So the noise will flow out one or both of the lines at the same time, and then close back through the two impedances on the measurement unit, and then back through the ground plane. So if we want to filter this noise by adding a series element, well, we can't do anything on the ground side, so we need to add it on both of the lines. So adding it on just one line will cause the current to, well, bypass it, and adding parallel elements is not always even possible. So we would need to add a parallel element in between our lines and the ground. So if you have access to the ground plane, so in the form of a protected earth connection or something, then you can add a parallel element. Otherwise, if you just have the two supply lines, then you can't even add a parallel element. You're only left with a series element to control common mode noise. And the most common method to control common mode noise is of course the common mode choke. Now it's important to mention here that having series elements on both lines is not always an option. Especially with battery powered circuits, you might want to make sure that there are no voltage potential differences on the ground line. So between your power supply and your circuit and in between circuits supplied from the same bus. So usually any series filter elements will be present only on the positive supply. And of course, two inductors are more expensive than one. So that's another good reason to not filter both supply lines. And to illustrate that, let's revisit our first experiment. So with a series element on both lines, so we had an inductor on both the positive and the negative line, we were able to attenuate both types of noise to a certain extent. But now let's see what happens if we only place a series element on just one of the lines. So I will keep this reference in pink, so the initial noise that we started off with, and we'll be comparing our filters to that. So if I short circuit the black line, and my LISN is measuring on the red line, so on the positive line, we can see quite a decent attenuation on both frequencies. So both the differential mode and the common mode noise seem to be equally attenuated. So great filter, right? Well, let's check out what happens if we short circuit the other line. Well, this time we see a bit of a difference. So our differential mode noise is just as much attenuated. So regardless of where the series element is on one line or the other, it's exactly the same. But our common mode noise isn't just less filtered, it's even worse than our reference. So we can see that it goes about six, seven decibels above our reference measurement. So somehow we ended up making things even worse. So what's going on? Why does it matter so much which line contains the filter. Well, remember how I said that common mode noise can go out one or both of your lines? Well, in this case, when we added the single series element, on this particular line, we were seeing both common mode noise and differential mode noise being attenuated, whereas on the other line, we saw the differential mode noise attenuated just as much. So since the series element is in the path of the differential mode noise, it's attenuating it regardless of where it's placed. But with the common mode noise, the noise now sees two paths of different impedance. So on the one side, we have our series impedance creating a large impedance path. And on the other side, we don't have anything. We just have our measurement equipment. So most of the noise will take the path of least impedance, the one on which we only have the measurement equipment. And what's different now than not having any sort of filter is that this is only 50 ohms. So since the noise is not being split up into two resistors, so the two 50 ohms in parallel 25, it only sees one 50 ohm resistor, it's creating a larger noise spectrum. So by adding the single series element, we were able to attenuate differential mode noise and make common mode noise worse by redistributing it. And this brings us to the final element that I want to talk about today, how a parallel filter element specifically designed for differential mode noise can help with common mode noise. 
So our main problem here is that the two supply lines are unbalanced. They show different impedance for the common mode noise. So what we can try to do is rebalance them. So if we now add an extra parallel element after our series element, the effect that this will cause is to bring the second line's impedance closer to the first line's. So if our parallel element has negligible impedance compared to the other resistors present in the common mode noise circuit, then from the common mode noise this point of view, it can go down one line and then split up over the two through our parallel element and again see both lines. So to go back into the 25 ohms of the two lines. So ideally, by adding this element, we shouldn't be able to filter the common mode noise, but at least we should be getting it to the same level as before adding our series element. So with this sort of arrangement, we won't be attenuating the common mode noise, but at least we won't be making it worse. But at the same time, we should be getting quite good filtration on the differential mode noise, since now we have both a series element and a parallel element, forming a second order filter. So now, what I did, I moved both inductors onto the same line, onto the red line, but I also added a capacitor after the inductors. So the effect that this capacitor should have is first of all improve differential mode filtering, because now we have a second order filter, but it should also help with balancing the common mode noise. So if we try this out, we can see our differential mode noise quite well attenuated, and we can see that our common mode noise is exactly at the level at which it was without any filter. And if I change the line on which I measure, so we move the LSN to the other terminal, we see the exact same story. So our differential mode noise is quite well attenuated, but our common mode noise is exactly at the level at which it was to begin with. So it's important to see that by adding this capacitor, we didn't really attenuate the common mode noise, we just better balanced it between the two lines. So this filter is not doing anything about common mode noise, other than splitting it up equally on the two supply lines. Now, you may have noticed that the improved filter did not seem to filter differential mode noise all that much better than the previous measurements. And this is mainly because of my noise mixer is not really creating pure differential and pure common mode noise. There's a bit of common mode noise in the differential mode noise and vice versa. In the end, noise filtration can only be done efficiently if we understand the entire system. The noise types that are present, but also the paths that the noise take, as well as all of the impedances present. There's a lot more to say on filters, especially about how component parasitics have a major impact, but that's a topic for a different time. For now, hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments, thank you for watching, make sure to subscribe to be up to date on my videos, and see you next time. Bye bye.